Welcome. This is Liz Haas with Raise This Photo Mask. Thank you for, for tuning in to our virtual trade show. I'm excited to present to you live today. I have a full segment planned for you. This is gonna be one of several segments that we're gonna do for you. And we're hoping to help kind of bring some training into your office, into your home, and um, hopefully I can help you. Post questions I'll, and comments. I'm, I will do my best to get to those questions as, as we go through our segments. So I'm really, I'm gonna take a few minutes to look through them um, as we move through, e process through this, um, through the steps of sand carving. So let me, let me tell you what we're gonna do today is um, with sand carving, what is sand carving? Sand carving is etching depth into hard materials. And I have a few samples that I'm gonna show you but what I, I'm really hoping to do is kind of get you up and running with your sand carving system and then also kind of explaining the mass production to you, the process of producing a stencil. So let me show you what some of the samples I have for sand carving. The first one I have here is a tequila bottle. And the first thing that happens when people are interested in sand carving and I show them this bottle is they feel the depth. That is sand carving. You are in control over the depth of, of your project. The blaster is. The more passes you do, the deeper the etch. That is the quality right there. There are several engraving methods out there, but sand carving gives you the depth. And you can see here I have a little pop of paint. Just kind of brightens up this whole piece right here. But that's sand carving. You can etch depth into sand carving. The second project I have is a wine bottle. And you can see this design here. This is a negative design. It has three colors of paint. Let's turn this over. Same design, but a positive one color of paint. You can see it looks quite different. It's not that one is right or wrong. It's all based on the creativity of the artist, of the, of the person producing the artwork. So this is sand carving. You can take your creativity and you can add it to your project. The second bottle I have here, spirit bottle, is there's no paint on this, but it's showing the detail that you can achieve. Look at this small text here. All the centers of your letters are intact. You have a nice surface etch. Let me turn this over, and then you can see all this fine lettering right in there. That's photoresist film. That's why you're able to achieve that kind of detail in this bottle. And then one more design on the back here, taking that logo, blasting it, adding a white paint with a little bit of glitter on top, making this a very unique design. Take a look here, I have metal. So you have, we have our glass, and now let's move on to metal. Stainless steel, it's great for sandblasting. It's very fast, quick. You have here, this is your etch, no paint, very smooth. You have um, the PSE there, blasted, painted red, and then we have the text below, painted black. But this is all etched. You have two colors of paint, and then no paint. Powder coated. So we have here powder coated tumblers, very popular right now, and you can sandblast them. But what makes sandblasting different is you can add a paint fill. So looking, you have a gold, and then we have the black paint. A tip for you, if you're painting powder-coated tumblers, you do not have to blast all the way to the metal if you're adding paint. You can just blast enough to remove some of that coating for that paint to hold. So that's a little tip for you, uh, for those of you that are blasting tumblers. Stone. Stone is very popular to sand carve. So we have our glass, our metal, now let's move to stone. This right here is a travertine piece. It's only a sample of a four-foot panel that was done. We have all these donors that gave. Some gave a little money, same gave, some gave a lot, but they are all recognized when it comes to donor recognition. Sometimes donor recognition is something that is, is overlooked by businesses. So you want to kind of take a look at donor recognition in your local area, your schools, boys and girls clubs, YMCAs, colleges. They're all great. They need to raise money. Why, why can't they use you to produce those projects? but stone is great. Um, we used a six mil, or our customer used a six mil for this particular panel, um, and was able to achieve depth and add a paint fill. So think of like your granite, 
you have river, river rock, um, all different types of tile, you have your stone. So that is all one area that can all be sandblasted and then added a paint fill. Okay, so let, I'm gonna take a look to see if there's any questions so far. And I think that's just kind of my intro right now. So I think we're doing good. I don't see questions. So great, so let's move on as to what, um, talk about photoresist film or our sand carving films. So how many laser engravers do I have out there? All right, Some, a lot of you are, are laser engraving your items and, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a great way to operate a business, but you wanna add sand carving. So you have, you have your laser, all your products, but now you're thinking about adding sand carving. This right here, this film, laser mask is for you. Um, it's very easy to use. It's a great product. You just peel it off, you cut what you need, apply it to your substrate, once you apply it, you squeegee it, and then you're gonna peel away this clear liner. It peels away really easy. You put it in your laser with your, with your substrate. Your laser will burn the design, and then you sandblast it. Simple. A lot of times a laser engraver will ask me, why would a laser engraver ever use photoresist film? And it's quantity. If you start getting high quantities, you have a big project, instead of tying up your laser to create all those designs, send us the artwork, we'll send you back the stencils ready to be blasted. They'll come um, like full sheets, just like this, and you'll just receive all the stencils, peel and stick, simple. And that's when a laser engraver starts getting into large quantities, that's when you move to photoresist film. So photoresist film, it comes in different thicknesses, it comes in rolls and sheets. Um, you're looking at like your three mil, your four mil, your five mil and self stick and then you can go to like a six mil um, and also like a nine mil. This particular project was a six mil for the depth. So a three mil would be more for your surface etch. Three mil is something for like this fine detail right here. Three mil, so you have detail, a surface etch. Your five mil would be something like this tequila bottle. Getting that depth would be like a five mil. And your four mil is the best of both worlds. You have detail, but you're able to etch a little bit deeper to get a little nice cut um, with sand carving. Okay, so again, post your questions as needed. We kind of covered the films, and now we're going to go ahead and we're gonna explain the project that I'm gonna be doing with you today. So we have, um, again, a local business that has a barber shop, and um, he has his own shop, and he wanted some glasses customized for his with his logo for his customers. He serves um, whiskey and beer and he wanted to customize his glasses just like this right here. If you can see that. And a ni his logo on this curved surface. Looks great. So I'm going to apply this stencil for you today on a curved surface. And we're going to, but first we're gonna make that mask. So how do you get your artwork? A lot of people, um, We'll ask that question. Sometimes your customers send you a JPEG image, a colored image. You have to have black and white. So you're gonna need to convert that colored image to black and white. Everything that's black in your artwork will be sandblasted. So just like I have here, my, my areas that are black is exactly what was etched. Okay, so black and white artwork. The next thing that's important is a vector image. You need to have a vector image. That's gonna give you the cleanest, sharpest lines over a JPEG, it's gonna give you the highest resolution. So a vector image with clean, sharp lines is gonna give you a great mask, then it's gonna give you a great final product. Okay, so you want those clean, sharp lines with a vector image. So let's talk about why do I have boxes around my artwork? And I get asked this question. We put boxes around our artwork. We do normally a quarter inch, sometimes a half inch, depending on, on the customer's needs. But Anytime you have your artwork, we would like you to put a quarter inch border. We recommend that because it makes it easy to trim and it keeps your artwork nice and clean. So just like here, we were able to do this full sheet, legal size sheet, and then we trimmed it down. And so you have your nice little, all your masks are the same size. So you have nice little cut lines. Instead of trying to cut it with scissors, you can use your trimmer or a paper cutter and you trim down your stencils very easy. So we're gonna take our artwork, black and white artwork. The key here is an opaque print. 
We prefer inkjet printing because you can change your settings to give you the, uh, an opaque print. So we have inkjet film that we printed our artwork on. Okay, and so you want to use your, on your artwork, you want to use Illustrator or Corel Draw. You want to make sure you're printing in CMYK mode, um, K at 100%. So we want the blackest print possible so we can start our process. So let's move over to exposure. Okay, so most of you have this electrolyte unit here. And this is a very handy tool. You can use it for exposing your stencils. Um, you can use it for UV gluing. We'll get into that on another segment. But let's talk about mask producing your stencils um, with this. This is a minute timer. So you want to make sure that you use a digital timer. Because the film exposes so fast, you want to keep it to 20 seconds. So that's really important. I often get asked, hey, why, why can't I just do like a minute? What happens if I go over? And what happens is you're going to have a longer washout. And if you, start have, if you have like a lot of detail, that detail will start to close up with a longer exposure. So really do your best to keep your exposure at 20 seconds. You see this foil bag? That means our film is light sensitive. So you want to keep it in the package until you're ready to use it. I can use it under this lighting here for a couple minutes, but I do my best to keep it in the bag until I'm ready to use it. So let's take a look here. We're going to open this up and let's make a mask. For the sake of time, I have a smaller image here and I'm just going to cut my photoresist film. Okay, so I have my artwork here, so I'm just going to transfer this image over. I'm going to put my stencil back in here, my material, keep that safe. Okay. And then okay, so when it comes to your photoresist film, you want the shiny side down, matte side up, and your ink side face down. So what we're going to do is you're going to transfer that image over. So the light process is just image transfer. Okay. So we're going to lay this down. We're going to wrap this up in our with our cylinder here. Oops. I'm working backwards. Sorry about that. Here we go. Here we go. So this blanket should be nice and tight. If it's tight and it's hard to to clip on, it means that you're going to have good good compression between the the artwork and your photoresist film. So with this unit right here, you want to make sure that you do keep an eye on that blanket, that it's not loose, that it's tight, because that gives you the best compression during exposure. And I'm exposing here. You can see for 20 seconds. And then let's talk about our um, electrolyte unit here. Okay. So we're going to let that sit for just a moment. But let's talk about our Luminex 1422. Um, is an exposure unit, just like this electrolyte unit. But what's different about this is a vacuum unit. So, and it's a larger exposure bed. So you have two legal size sheets that I can put my film on. So let me kind of demonstrate this for you. And I'll do one sheet here. But it's a vacuum compression. So we're gonna take our sheet, place it down, your ink side down, just like you normally would. Okay. And then we're going to bring down this screen. And what's unique about this is this screen is actually a textured pattern. I'm going to turn the vacuum on. It vacuums very quickly. So instead of the electrolyte pad, you actually have a vacuum compression here that's compressing the artwork to your photoresist film. That's giving you the highest resolution possible during exposure. So we have our vacuum. We're going to go ahead and bring down the light. And then it's six seconds. It exposes for six seconds. That's the great thing. You have quick, a quick compression and you have quick exposure. And that's it. You're done. Six seconds for two legal size sheets. That's quick. Why do you need a Luminex exposure unit? When you start producing stencils, you don't want to turn this on and doing one sheet at a time. You can do two sheets at once, load them in your washer, and that way you're speeding up your production for those of you that are, are um, processing mass and you need to process it right away. So let me go ahead and take my exposed sheet that we let sit here for a few minutes. 
So now I have my artwork on here. We're going to take this and we're going to wash it out. Now here I have a white wash up board and this is included with your mask making kit. Um, it's white for a reason. It's a white metal board because it provides contrast when you are washing out. So I'm going to take my mask, I'm going to place it there. And preferably I like to have hot water because hot water will help it wash out faster. So now I'm just going to take my, my hand sprayer. It's my Razist hand sprayer and it provides pressure. And what's key here is being about one to two inches from your mask. Now my water is a little cold right now, um, but if you start with hot water, it will wash this mask out much faster. So again, one to two inches away, nice even strokes. You can start to wash out your stencil. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for that blue resist to dissolve in my artwork area. And you can kind of see it now. Now, honestly, this is where a lot of people stop right here. They see their design, but it's not completely washed out. You want to make sure that it looks white because you have that white board. You want to you want to make sure that white board helps you to tell when that blue resist is dissolved. All right. And there we go. That is washed out. Let it dry. Take remove it off the board. You can hang it up. You can put it on a table. Um, you you want to let it dry as it dries it starts to become sticky or tacky and that's what we're waiting for when it's dry it's one solid color okay and after it's washed out it's no longer sensitive to the light so you don't have to worry about covering it or anything like that once it's washed out you can store it with cover paper you can use it right away it, it doesn't matter there's no time limit so that's where you can make your stencils ahead of time and use some cover paper so let's come back to our glass project here so we have our stencils. I have cover paper on the back here. Um, we use cover paper to cover the stencils to protect the sticky side. Okay, and so this is great for, for just storing or even just trimming your stencils. So let me start with our glass project here. And we're going to produce this image onto our whiskey glass. Now these are already cleaned. And I'm going to take my, my whiskey glass here and we're going to deal with this curved surface and with photo resist what's nice is that it is flexible and i'm able to deal with this curve using photo resist film so i'm going to remove my cover paper and then what i like to do is i like to pinch the corner really hard to kind of create a little bit of a pull tab now i don't know if you can see that but i have a little pull tab and then when i'm dealing with the curved surface i like to separate it part way okay now I'm going to put this mask on, and you'll know what I mean. If I put this mask on, I can't get it to lay down correctly. And what's happening is this clear liner is restrict restricting the mask from, a, from uh, being flexible. So you want to line it up correctly. And let's say, okay, I need to fix it up. You can reposition it as many times as you need to. Okay, and then now I'm going to remove my clear liner. And now my mask is pretty flexible. So I'm just going to start with the center of my text. I'm going to get that laid down. I'm going to use my fingers. I'm going to press that into place. Okay. And then I'm going to go up the center here. And I'm going to start with the center. And then I'm going to work my way out. Now you're going to fight with some wrinkles. That's okay. Leave the wrinkles. Just move them outside your design. Okay. Air bubbles. You're not going to have any, bl any blaster with air bubbles. The air bubbles are fine. You just want to move any air bubbles outside your design. Now, I know I have a big air bubble right there. That's perfect. Just going to kind of push it out. The next tool that I like to use is a wire wheel roller. So let me grab that. The wire wheel roller is handy because you can see that there's a plastic here, and that plastic is holding my design together but sometimes there's air that gets trapped underneath there and we want to release that air. We don't want to blast with an air bubble in my like M or in my E area because that could propose a lift 
of the mask. So I'm just going to roll over my design and just pop, perforate that membrane, that thin plastic. And hopefully you can see that okay. And that's it. You don't need to use pressure. Just roll over it, and it's just going to perforate that membrane. And then I would use my fingers when it comes to a, a um, curved surface, just kind of press it down into place. So now I'm going to take tape, and I'm using painter's tape. If I were blasting on stone or blasting deep, like heavy blasting, I would use our vinyl tape, our sandblast tape. And it's, it's a great tape when you're blasting deep. You can... Um, take it and you can rip off and what's nice about it is it's ribbed so you can take it and then it cuts easily into strips and that's the great thing about vinyl tape it's made for heavy blasting but for this we're doing a surface etch on the glass and so we're going to use our painters tape so I'm going to take my tape I'm going to apply it to my glass now we don't need to tape the whole glass we're just going to do four pieces of tape just to cover the front And th that's it. So now we are ready to sand carve this piece. And I have a little wrinkle right there, but you just press down and it's fine. We're ready to go. Let's talk about blasting. I'm going to grab my little picker here to kind of demonstrate nozzle. So when we're blasting a curved surface, what's, what's important here is a 90 degree angle and it's nozzle control. So you're going to hold the nozzle like you're holding a pencil. And I want you to start out about let's say five to six inches away from the, from the beginning. About five to six inches, we're gonna take that nozzle, we're gonna step on the pedal, and sand is going to flow, and we're just gonna move through this piece. We're gonna rotate our, our hand so that we're always maintaining a 90 degree angle. When I blast on the side, I'm gonna rotate this glass and blast at a 90 degree angle, okay? So that's important when it comes to blasting. Keep that nozzle control. Be mindful of how close you are. I see people get really close. All you're doing is just going to burn that mask even further. So you, what you want to do is about five to six inches to start. You can move into four, but when you're beginning, let's start at five or six inches. Let's talk about our blaster here. Now, this right here is our 2034 sand carving system. Now this is our most popular um, sand carving system that we sell. We have a smaller unit as well, our 1924, very powerful. But with these systems, with this particular one, you have a dual door entry, okay? So you can see that dual door entry. You have LED lighting. You have HEPA filtration, and that's extremely important. We have 11 HEPA filtered bags. And what that does is that contains your dust and debris. So you have it all contained. It does not escape out into your environment. It's all completely contained. So you have HEPA, you have dual doors, LED lighting, and then we have Vortex. And that's inside the cabinet. You'll see that working while I'm blasting. You'll see that um, Vortex right in the back here. And what that does is it pulls in all of your usable abrasive, your dust and debris, and it goes through an air wash. It separates your good sand from your dust, and that dust goes out through your HEPA filtration. Your good sand falls right back into your cabinet, and it sits right up here on the top until you're depressurized. Once you depressurize, that sand falls into your pressure pot. You have your regulator, so your air comes in here. This ball valve is on, so we have our air compressor. We have our foot pedal connection. You have your moisture trap here, very important. And then you have your blasting pressure gauge, okay? Um, this is your air valve. This is controls how much air comes out of your sand blast hose. And down here at the bottom, that is your sand flow valve. That controls how much sand comes out of your sand blast hose. So we want your air and your sand valves to be at a 45 degree angle. We want what we're looking for is 50% air, 50% sand for your blasting abrasive, for your stream. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this started. What another important feature here is it's adjustable. So we can adjust it simply with the touch of a switch. And this is ideal when you're dealing with, with multiple people blasting 
you want to make sure that you can uh, adjust it to where they're comfortable blasting. And where is comfortable? Where is the right height for you? And we're going to say to where, it's where your forearms are parallel to the floor. And this would be about where I need to stand with my heels on today. So you want to make sure your forearms are parallel to the floor so you're standing upright. You're not hunched over while you're blasting. We want to be standing upright. We want to be comfortable as we're sandblasting. Because some of us may have to sandblast for a few hours. We want to be comfortable when we're doing that. So let's take a look here. We're going to put our piece in. And if you've noticed that the inside of our cabinet is epoxy powder coated as well as the outside. So this is the highest form of treatment that you can do to metal is epoxy powder coat. And that's something we do. We don't paint them. Uh, we don't use an industrial paint. We send all of, our, all of our equipment, everything that we manufacture as far as equipment gets sent out for epoxy powder coating. And that's for your benefit. When this system is 20 years later sitting in your facility, it's still gonna look good. The metal's still gonna be good because we took that extra step and we had it epoxy powder coated for you. So let's take a look here. We have our foot pedal. I have my blasting pressure set at 30. I like to use 30, uh, blasting around 30, 35 when I'm dealing with glass. If you're dealing with stone, blasting stone, you can increase that pressure. So let's, let's start blasting right now. I'm going to step on that pedal. You can see my stream here. That stream looks really nice. 50% air, 50% sand. And you may notice that I'm not wearing gloves today. Um, if you, if you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. But I'm dealing with a very low pressure, very fine abrasive. It doesn't hurt my hands. Um, but there are occasionally, if I'm blasting stone, I'll put on gloves. Okay, and we're just going to blast. I'm going to rotate this glass. You see that membrane blasting away. I'm going to come down here to my text, etch that. So at this point, it's already etched. Now we're going to go for depth. I'm just kind of rotating my nozzle and the glass maintaining that 90 degree angle. Whether you're using laser mask, it would be the same process. And I prefer if you're just starting out, start at 30, get that nozzle control and then go ahead and move up, increase your blasting pressure. I have some people blasting glass at 40, 45 pounds and that's fine. They know what depth they need to achieve and just start start low and increase as you feel comfortable the next question i get often is how can i tell what kind of depth i have and i often say you'll start to get an eye for it but first kind of hold up your kind of rotate your glass and you can actually see a little step from the photoresist to the glass that's my depth so i believe this is it has a perfect depth for blasting but one thing I want to keep in what I really want to iterate to you is I want you um, to move your nozzle nice and slow passes when you're blasting. We don't need to move all over and blast real fast. Gain that control when you're blasting. There's and, and you'll start to etch much faster, but you'll have an even blast. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. I always tell people clap your hands. You'll keep that dust inside. Your area is only contaminated by what you bring out. So you want to make sure that you empty everything inside. You can use a little blow gun. We have blow guns that you can connect to your regulator and you just blow off your, your stencil. So let's take, let's remove this stencil here. You can kind of see, um, we're going to remove this and it comes off really easy. And laser mask would peel away nice and easy as well. Okay. So you can take it to the sink to clean it, but what we're going to do is I'm just going to use some glass cleaner and I'm going to take my towel and just clean this up. And here we go. Now, if you were adding a paint fill, we would leave that stencil on and then we would add a paint fill. And let's take a look here pretty very nice and you can see my other stencil here my other glass 
done. And so you would do that process. Let's say you're making several, mask them all, put them in, load them in your cabinet, blast them, take them, put them in a sink. And after a couple minutes, even one minute, that mass starts to separate from that glass. And it's easy to clean it, easy to remove it. But let's talk real quick again. Let's kind of go over what we talked about. We have our sand carving system. You're able to blast on glass, wood, metal, stone. All of those materials you can etch, you can sand carve. Photoresist film, you have different thicknesses. It comes in three, four, and five. If you start blasting on stone, you can use a six and nine mil. Um, laser mask for the laser engravers. Leave that stencil on after you're sandblasting. Add a paint fill. I'm just going to touch real quick on, on the paint fill. Um, I have a booth set up. We're going to do this on another segment when we get into paint fill application. But some of the paints that I like to use um, are the Belton Molotow paints from artprimo.com. They're great paints. They're graffiti paints. And they work very well um, for glass and stone, wood. Another paint that they sell that I'm a fan of is the Montana paints, but in gold. These are both low pressure paints and they work great for our items in our sand carving industry. Again, your glass, your metal, your stone, all of that. So that's where it works. Um, these are great tools to have when you're adding a paint fill application and they're pretty durable. But we will get into painting on another segment here and I'll cover all about painting, your painting caps, different things that you need to do when it comes to painting. But I do want to go over um, the 2034 one more time. I just want to kind of make sure that you know that we are having a sale right now. So if you log on to our website, you can see things that we're offering for you to improve your business, for you to make money. Um, sand carving systems, again, they're adjustable. They recycle the abrasive. Um, they're on wheels. Uh, so it's easy to move as needed. What you need in addition to one of our sand blasters is you need to have an air compressor. And you want to make sure you have a, at least a two horsepower air compressor um, to operate your sand carving system. When you're dealing with making a stencil, our mass making kit is great for you. It has the electrolyte unit, the, the um, white washout board, the hand sprayer. You have um, inkjet film and as well as three mil, four mil, and five mil of your photoresist film. So it allows you to kind of play with the different mills to get started to see what works best for you and for your, for your business. Um, so that is our mask making kit. And then you, we have the laser mask and our equipment. But I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing about your comments. I'm looking forward to hearing your posts. And I think we might have a, a post here or a comment. Let me take a look. And is that on, I'm on Facebook, sorry. Give me just a moment here. Let's see. I'm not seeing any comments, do we have some comments? Okay, bear with me just a moment guys. And I'm hoping to get to those quickly. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Um, Okay, so so why would I want to put it in my laser than sand carve? Um, so that's great. Why would I want to put it in my laser than sand sand carve? If you're just doing one-offs, great for you to to kind of add that laser mask to your item, and then you can laser to the laser will burn your your image, and then you sand carve it. Sand carving is going to give you the depth. That's what sand carving does. You can use your laser. Laser is going to etch your glass. It's going to engrave it. But what sand carving does is it removes that material, that glass material, where you can feel that depth. And it's just a higher perceived value. That's what comes with, with sand blasting. And we're saying utilize your laser and then get and then put in the sand blaster and do a few passes and you have that depth. And that's, that's, that's why a laser engraver would add sand carving to the business for that depth. Okay. And... Let's see here. Can I laser the film, um, then put it on the item to sandblast? Okay, so you're trying to use your laser to, l to laser, create the stencil, then put that stencil on your substrate. Can it be done? Yes. It's a little harder. I don't recommend it doing, doing that all the time, especially when you have a, a large production run. What you want to do is you want to have it on like a, low, like a transfer tape, like a low-tack transfer tape. Put that laser mask on, laser out your image, 
then use that to apply it to your su um, substrate surface. What you're looking at is if your laser burns all the way through, then you're going to lose the centers of your letter. So that's why we're saying put it on a transfer tape. That way you're able to, to capture those centers of those letters. Okay. Let's see here. Um, there are, great, hi Jim. So yes, there are some resources for converting your JPEG images to a vector image. Good point, thanks for bringing that up. There are, um, there are um, software programs out there. Um, I personally use Vector Magic. Um, you don't have to have a subscription. You can load up three designs. Um, I believe it's like $7 around there. But there are places that you can go where you can load up your JPEG image, hit Vectorize, and it vectors it. I know that um, Illustrator and CorelDRAW both have that function. Vector Magic is slightly better when it comes to tracing, but where it, where it doesn't work well, if you have such a low res image, it doesn't trace all that fine detail so well, and you might have to clean it up at that point. Let me see here what else we got. Um, let's see here. Can you wash with cold water? Yes, you can. I started washing with cold water. It takes a few seconds longer. What's important, especially if you're washing with cold water um, during, during mass um, production, is to have that nozzle about one to two inches from your mask. That's going to be key. Pressure is going to be key when you're dealing with cold water. And let's see here. Um, again, cold water, yes, cold water, hot water work work well they both work well and i think that i am i think we're almost done with our questions here and if i'm missing something please shout it out to us i hear someone asking about the blowgun yes we have a blowgun i can uh, i will post about that it's a very simple easy to use um, blowgun you just connect it to your regulator and then you have a, a low pressure air gun inside your cabinet. So you're not dealing with that high pressure that can blow off your photoresist film. You're dealing with a low pressure um, that's able to remove that dust and debris off of your, your surface. And you can, it's great for paint filling as well. So remove that dust, uh, that dust off your engraved surface and then you're ready to add a paint fill application. So I think that's, I've answered your questions. Um, I will review all of the posts and just to make sure that all of your questions are answered. Thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to present to you live. Um, tell me what you're looking for. Are you looking for painting? Are you looking for stone engraving? What things are you looking for? Send them to me and we're gonna start to present our next segment next week. And um, we're doing something different. I'm excited to kind of show you and I'm looking forward to your post. Thank you for joining Raisist. And uh, take a look at our website. We have a lot of things there for you, raisist.com. Thank you.